In a previous video, I showed how the chemical reaction between calcium metal and liquid water produces some really interesting effects that are great for Halloween. In this video, I'd like to show you how you can conduct this experiment in a way that allows you to collect data that can be quantitatively analyzed. The experiment and analysis touches on many concepts in thermochemistry, including the heat equation, standard enthalpies of formation, and standard enthalpies of reaction. All you need to carry out this reaction is some water and calcium metal. Here, I have weighed out 115 grams of water into this styrofoam cup. You'll need to take the initial temperature of the water, which you'll note here is 20.3 degrees Celsius. Now I'm going to add 0 0.899 grams of calcium metal. The white color on this mostly gray colored metal tells me my calcium isn't entirely pure. However, it'll probably work fine for this simple experiment. The reaction takes a bit to get going. After a little while, you might notice some bubbles. That's hydrogen gas being produced. You might also notice the formation of some white colored calcium oxide, but that's hard to see because it's the same color as the styrofoam cup. I'm going to cover the reaction mixture with this second styrofoam cup to try to trap all the energy being released in this reaction. It's exothermic, so it releases a good bit of energy. Let's see what happened to the temperature of the water. Hey look, it's going up. That's because the reaction between calcium metal and water released energy into the water. It looks like the temperature rose all the way to 35 degrees Celsius. We now have enough information to quantitatively analyze our results. Let's now analyze our results. This chemical equation represents the reaction that we just saw between calcium solid and water forming calcium oxide and hydrogen gas. You might remember that we used 115 grams of water and to that 115 grams of water we added 0 0.899 grams of calcium, solid calcium. Uh, the reaction took place, our initial temperature of the water was 20.3 degrees Celsius and our final temperature of the water was 35 degrees Celsius. So the reaction released energy and that energy went into the water. We can use the heat equation, Q equals mc delta T, to find the energy that was released into the water through the reaction of 0.899 grams of solid calcium undergoing this particular reaction. Let's see, the mass of the water that gained the energy was 115 grams. The specific heat of water, that's 4.2 joules for every gram, for every degree Celsius change that the water undergoes. And then our change in temperature, that's going to be the final temperature minus the initial temperature, which is 35 degrees Celsius minus 20.3 degrees Celsius. That's 14.7 degrees Celsius. So the energy gained is heat by the water. Let's see, the units there, this gram cancels this inverse gram when I multiply those together. This inverse degree Celsius cancels this degree Celsius when I multiply them together. And the unit that's left is a joule. Now we can do the numerical portion of the calculation. 115 times 4.2 times 14.7. 7,100 joules. Now we should recognize that that 7,100 joules that was released into the water came from the reaction of 0.899 grams of calcium. So let's figure out how many joules per mole of calcium reacted this comes out to. So I take my 7,100 joules and I'm going to divide that by 0 0.899 grams of calcium. Of course, there's 40.1 grams of calcium for every mole of calcium. And we can figure it out. 7,100 divided by 0.899 multiplied by 40.1. We can see that that's going to be 317,000 rounding up joules. Uh, 
this gram of calcium cancels this gram of calcium for every mole of calcium that reacted. Now, of course, we can also convert that to kilojoules per mole just by dividing by 1,000. It's going to be 317 kilojoules per mole for every mole of calcium that reacts. Now, because the water increased in temperature, you know, the, the energy for the water is going to be positive, and that energy came from this reaction, so this reaction released the energy. So if we want the enthalpy change for this particular reaction, it would be, according to our measurements, a negative 317 kilojoules per mole of calcium reacted. Let's see how our value that we measured of 300, negative 317 kilojoules per mole for this particular reaction. Let's see how that, that compares to standard values. Uh, you might remember that we can calculate, we can calculate the standard enthalpy for any reaction by taking the sum of the standard enthalpy of formation of the products and subtracting from that the standard enthalpy of formation of the reactants. These are tabulated values of the standard enthalpy of formation. Okay, so we're going to make a dividing line here to divide the reactants from the products. And if we look up these values for the standard enthalpy of formation of these substances, the standard enthalpy of formation of calcium oxide is negative 635 kilojoules per mole. For hydrogen gas, it's zero because hydrogen gas, diatomic hydrogen, is hydrogen in its standard state. Over here, if we look up the standard enthalpy of formation of water, we find that's a negative 286 kilojoules for every mole of water that's produced. And calcium in its standard state is solid calcium, and so we're going to enter a zero here. Now we'll plug these values into this equation. So we'll find the standard enthalpy for this particular reaction. We'll take the standard enthalpy of formation of the products, 635 kilojoules, and there's only one mole, so we're going to take negative 635 kilojoules. And we're going to add zero, which doesn't, doesn't matter. And now we need to subtract the standard enthalpy of the formation of the reactant sum together, which is zero and a negative 286 kilojoules. Following the math here, we're going to actually add. we got to make this positive. And so the standard enthalpy for this particular reaction should be 635 negative plus 286. 635 plus 286, negative 349 kilojoules. Looks like for every mole of calcium that reacts. And that's fairly close to what we found when we ran the reaction in the styrofoam cup.